David Blunkett. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I have um, a registered interest, including the News International, and I'm also, uh, my family are in receipt of damages from News International. I'm also a key witness uh, in the forthcoming trial. Uh, I have been a victim. I'm going to go through that tonight because anything I experienced was nothing compared uh, with those very high profile cases which involved uh, the death of children and, and the missing of children and it would be un unthinkable of me to make any comparison. In any case, I've eschewed making any remarks publicly about what happened to me in order not to rerun them for the people who were involved and were closest to me. But suffice it to say, on a slightly lighter note, that I did succeed in over 50 cases in getting retractions and in being able to get some limited redress, but as Lord Leveson pointed out, that was because I could afford to go to law and did, and in most cases, was unable to get any kind of redress through the Press Complaints Commission. In fact, The Guardian on the 20th of August 2008 had a diary piece um, which actually said that my lawyers were the fastest in the West. Uh, and uh, mentioned Sky Television, Mirror Group and News International. Actually, all major publications I've been involved with over the last eight years um, have uh, had to, in one way or another, apologise or cough up. Uh, but it's a not an edifying situation to be in, and I wouldn't want anybody to have to go through what I went through. Actually, it wasn't so much about regulation sometimes as about morality and decent professional standards because, as well as all the print newspapers, I had a right time with Channel 4 over more 4. Uh, Ofcom were equally useless. Uh, I had a real problem with the BBC oh. who reported at one time that guns and drugs had been found in my house. It wasn't, of course, me at all that they were commenting on. And I'd been partying with a high-profile woman all night who then attacked her husband when I'd actually left her at 6.15, having had a cup of tea. But we all go through these things in public life. What we're trying to do, and what I hope we'll be able to do, is achieve something very much better for people who don't have the opportunity of redress in the way I have, or have never stood for public office or put themselves on the line. So I want tonight to try and address what happened pre-Leveson, and where we should be post Leveson, about which I've not spoken since Thursday afternoon. Pre Leveson was, as has been described tonight, uh, complemented by hyperbole. There were many things said uh, on all sides uh, which uh, upped the ante. And I want to suggest that what we've received with uh, Lord Justice Leveson's report is something different <coughs> to what people actually thought was going to be recommended. So much so that as Shami Chakrabarti, the head of Liberty, moves one way, I'm moving the other. <laughs> uh, I was slightly confused in hearing her this morning as to quite where she was, but I was confused. To, I was also confused tonight to quite understand where the Secretary of State was uh, as well. What I'm really standing up tonight to say is that I think that actually. Uh, those who have taken particular sides are so close together now, if we could take a step back, we'll find a way forward. The Secretary of State indicated that if the media do not accept the principles in full of the Leveson report in relation to the establishment of the independent regulator, that is the board, then the government would be prepared to act. I presume act actually meant take legal steps. Mm -hmm. So if they're prepared to do that and the, uh, the official opposition and the minority coalition partner has already indicated that they would, then we appear to have, across from the coalition and the opposition, a stated principal position that the media, when they meet tomorrow with the Secretary of State, will have to agree to come up with the full Leveson principles in relation to the new independent regulator. That brings us to not so much underpinning as oversight, because not only do we have to establish some way 
of providing the panel, perhaps through the, um, the Commission for Public Appointments, that will actually appoint the independent regulator, because that's a key recommendation. But we then need to translate whatever that panel might be into an oversight recognition body that will actually be able to take the annual report from the independent regulator and assess whether the independent regulator is standing up to its own laid down code and standards. And if we get to that point, and I'm against it being Ofcom, um, because I don't think Ofcom should be the body, partly because it is a regulator, and I'm trying in my, my head over the weekend to ensure that we don't actually have a regulator of a regulator, yeah. because otherwise we do have regulation. Yeah. And as Ofcom is a regulator, let's try and find another mechanism that is the oversight and recognition body that is so light touch that not even the most vehement opponent of what Leveson was supposedly going to say could actually now believe that Leveson's actual requirements and recommendations take us down the road of statutory regulation of the press, because clearly they don't. There are major issues around data protection that I'm sure can be negotiated and where solutions can be found. And if we can therefore get to a point where everyone is agreed on the principles that have been laid down for the independent regulator, and it's independent, that they can agree on a mechanism for getting the membership of that body in place, they, they can then actually ensure that we have the oversight that's necessary and that people seek in this House. I think there's a chance we might have cracked it. I don't have a final answer, because as the child said to their mother, Mother, if God made us, who made God? And it's a question I've been struggling with ever since I was a, a, a Methodist in Sunday school. But we are going to have to find a solution one way or the other to it, and I think it's possible with goodwill. There hasn't been a lot of goodwill. There, I mean, I've been as careful as I could in what I've written and spoken about, and I am now convinced that we can avoid underpinning by that oversight but it is going to take people sitting down in the next few weeks and being prepared to bury the hatchet and to put behind them what was said prior to last Thursday. If we can do that, then I think we'll, we'll have achieved a great deal, not on our behalf, not in terms of revenge, because looking back over your shoulder and seeking revenge isn't like sending an email. It actually re it rebounds on you, which is why I've not in any way been bitter about what's happened to me because you have to get on with life rather than con constantly reflect on the past. And we do at the moment live in a retro society, an emotional retro society where we're very much uh, looking over our shoulders to the misdemeanors and the catastrophes of the past. So I'm just making a plea tonight that we pick up Leveson, uh, we deal with those things that we can agree on, we move to the future and we will retain an independent, vigorous, sometimes extremely aggravating, sometimes unpleasant media, but we'll do so with the kind of oversight which will protect people in future by their own code and their own lights from the kind of horrors that have been demonstrated in front of the Leveson inquiry. Yeah.